Well, good morning, YouTube. What crazy idea do we have today? One of the things I would like to do is inspect the keel and the pin that attaches it and the cable and all that sort of stuff and drop the keel out and maybe even give this boat a uh, some new bottom painting. So what you can tell is this is the keel and it pivots about there and there's a cable that lowers and raises the back end of the keel. It's got a winch inside the cabin. I'm gonna put a, a platform, okay. And then putting a cradle to hold this keel. Now this keel goes quite a bit up inside this. So um, it would be real easy for this keel to fall down side to side and I don't want that. So I wanna design something that's got a lot of lateral shear stiffness and strength. So, and I'll be underneath here, so which is dangerous. So when I uh, lower the keel onto the cradle, pull the pin, raise the sailboat up, the sailboat will be sitting over my head and the only thing keeping it down is these cables in the corner and the brake on this thing. So I will be doing some lashings on here to give me some safety. I'll do lashings in each corner to hold this whole lift up um, as a safety precaution. This is the scrap from the rolling cart I had for the truck rebuild. So I'm going to see if I can use this to build a cradle. All right, my friends, I have cut some studs and plates and plywood. I decided to go with uh, 15 inches wide, 25 inches long, half inch plywood, two pieces. This is four pieces of 15 inches wide by 34 long and then I've got eight two by fours at ten and a half inches four two by fours at 12 inches four two by fours at 25 inches and six two by fours at 34 inches so that should be enough to build a really sturdy cradle and uh, I'm a nerd, but this is, you know, you gotta be safe. I got a lot of weight I'm dealing with here. So I designed these per the uh, NDS manuals. May, I think they're put out by the American Wood Council and made sure they were structurally, plenty structurally strong enough with a factor of safety of two. <laughs> um, so if you have a Catalina 22 keel, which is more popular than my Starwind 22, its keel's a little lighter. So this would be more than sufficient for a Catalina 22 keel as well, in case you want to put some wheels under it and uh, roll your keel all over the place. So, all right, I am going to put this together and you can see what it looks like in a, in a Hollywood minute. Okay, there's the walls little shear walls framed up this I need to cut out the slot for the keel the keel will go down inside this slot it sits on a double stack of two two by fours and yeah it's framed out with a two by four on either side there and then one at the ends and then these walls here just have plywood on this side that way I can gain access into there. I'm going to put screws through there into the stud that frames that cutout. So that's how these shear walls attach into these shear walls is through the vertical stud right there. I'll put, I don't know, three screws through there and there and there and there. And that'll prevent this thing from racking this way. And these walls are super strong for racking this way, and they're plenty wide enough that where the CG of the keel is, this thing won't overturn. All right, there it is. That is one two by four width there, three and a half inches slot. It's 12 inches deep. All right, YouTube, we uh, back on this project. I finished up the, the cradle and I added some 
all those little mending plates across there just to tie these walls into these walls. And then I put a little 3 16 inch thick metal plate down there just so when the keel sits in there it doesn't crush the wood fibers. Spreads it out a little bit. So now this is the lumber to build the um, four foot wide, ten foot long deck work platform that will go across the rails of the boat lift underneath the boat. And you can see I got a little ladder alongside of it. This is a temporary, temporary platform until I put the temporary platform in. So now it's time for the the plywood to go on to make that a shear diaphragm as they would call it in the engineering world. Alright, there is the platform. Kind of screwed up a little bit. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I cut the cut the joist at ten feet, and uh, I have ten feet of plywood. So <laughs> that was dumb. I should have cut the joist three inches shorter, shy of ten feet, because of the rim joist. But... Well, there's always something here, YouTube. <laughs> oh, engineering something for the first time. You always have some trials. Anyway, what I'm noticing you can see here is that these little brackets that hold the bunks uh, They're Interfering with my deck So I could get it a little lower, but that's about where it is and as you can see that keel Is quite a ways up off the deck. In fact It's about seven and a half inches. So I need the cradle to catch that keel eight inches above the deck so currently the cradle sits about three inches up so I'm gonna have to do something to make it five inches taller okay well I think I took care of it I took those plates out and then I added a 2x4 inside the slot so that doesn't make this 12 inches anymore it makes it uh, would that be 10 and a half inches which should be sufficient and then I added 2x4s going this way along the bottom of those walls that gave me an inch and a half and then I added uh, filler blocks there on either side and then two across there. It's ugly, but uh, it'll work! So let's slap it down there. That's going to be a beast to carry down there, but uh, get some gloves on and let's do it. Think it'll work? <laughs> well, YouTube, guess what that is? That's right. I got the pin out. And it goes right inside of there. There's a fitting here. And a fitting down inside that hole. Alright. There she be. Woo. Disconnected. We had a little snow. It's supposed to melt off today. But uh, it's definitely covered the old boat. Old oh, man, old oh, man, okay. So, as you can see, I got some oatmeal there for my wife. Warm me up. So I can hang out in my tree fort. So what we got here is this down here. That is the tube that uh, is part of the fitting that attaches to each side of this um, doghouse for the keel and then there's just a rubber deal that goes it's in the sink here looks like that and it goes inside that hole pull that out and you can see the the fitting on this side the pin this pin here goes inside there and goes through this fitting on this side through the hole in the keel and then into the fitting on this side has a drain plug on it 
that looks like this and it's just a pipe fitting with some uh, dope on there and it screws in there and keeps the water from coming in there's a little bit of water about an inch down inside there so this side I'm guessing is leaking so um, I got this wrench here and put it inside that hole in my big fat hand and was able to uh, turn it it'll take a while to get it out and my fear is I have to bury the whole wrench inside this opening to get it and there's a good chance I'm going to drop that to the bottom of the boat so I stopped <laughs> had a few more bites of oatmeal and then came up with the idea I better tie a rope to the box end of this wrench and that way if I do drop it I'll be able to boop, pull it out of the hole well 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 boy did I have a little bit of a battle I uh I didn't lose my wrench down in there but when I was turning this out I wasn't thinking it fell out of the pipe <laughs> and then rolled underneath the liner and I had no idea where it went so I shoved that black hose in there <laughs> was pushing it in and then I I heard it I heard it roll a little bit more so then I was looking around for another way to get in there and the only other place I found that was feasible is right around here this is where the cable goes through and there's access right in there and uh, so I put my inspection mirror a little camping mirror I put up in this corner shined a light so I could see behind here a little bit and sure enough that little guy was sitting right behind this right in right in here or at least I pushed it to that point and I used a, <laughs> a hot dog stick uh, you know, for a campfire or the wire ones, I bent it and uh, put it in there and uh, kind of pulled along the the ridge here and uh, kind of hooked it a few times and kept moving it and inching it this way until I finally got it behind that volcano there and uh, was able to grab it. Man, was that a chore. But, you know, I could have gone down to the plumbing store and just bought a new one, but... I don't like the idea of stuff like this rolling around inside the boat making a bunch of noise and whatever. So, I'm glad I got it. I feel better. So, victory! That's about half the water that was in there. And um, so, maybe that's a, a quart at most. And then I suck the rest out with the, with the vacuum. Okay, now I got the boat up, and in each corner I have chain. You can see the chain there. It's got a half inch bolt holding it to the rail. That incidentally is the same uh, if I wanted to put this winch, this mechanical brake winch thing, I could put it here. And, uh, Man that through that hole. So that is designed to take the weight of the cable. So I got that. And then here I got some chain around that. Two chains here and I've wrapped around the uh, the top rail of the lift and then I've got the chain around the horizontal fore and aft rail of this gantry. So at each corner I've got four or five thousand pounds working load the displacement of this boat is 2600 pounds minus the 800 pound keel I've got about 1800 pounds in weight up here now you can see I've raised it quite high to be able to kneel on that platform and work now a moment about safety uh, I've got if you figure the boat the boat itself, the depth of the boat is about four feet. So let's conservatively take the CG at about two feet up. Well, that may or may not be conservative, but middle of the, the shear of the boat, two feet up. Um, 
and then the distance underneath the boat to that rail is about 12 inches so I'm saying the CG of the boat is about three feet up from this rail three feet up these rails are about four feet apart and then there's one foot there to the ground so I have eight feet to the CG up front and in the back the water's deeper I have about 12 feet to the same point on the boat so on average I have about 10 feet from the ground to where I think the CG of the boat is and this boat lift is 10 feet wide so I have the boat 10 feet up and it's 10 feet wide is that safe so let's look at some quick math here switch hands with the camera and uh, let's see if we can think about this real quick and dirty like but uh, let's see we got this and we've got basically some sort of box and we've got the weight there of the boat we'll call it W now let's say you pushed on it sideways with some force how much force can we push sideways on this thing before uh, it topples over well if we say it's going to tip up on that corner you know it's going to it's going to tip tip about this corner right here then um, the distance the vertical distance to the force we said is about 10 feet on average from the ground to the cg of the boat so our tipping moment here or overturning moment is equal to force times 10. Our riding moment to stabilize it, if the boat lift is not anchored to the ground, so our only riding moment is the, the mass of the boat or the gravity acting on the boat, W here, the weight of the boat, acting over this horizontal distance and we said the boat lift was about 10 feet wide so i have a five foot riding moment or stabilizing moment arm so the riding moment is equal to the weight of the boat times five feet well as soon as the overturning moment exceeds the riding moment she tips over so it's going to tip over when 10F equals 5W. And so F equals 5W over 10, which equals 0.5W. So that means um, whatever weight this boat is, whether it's 1,800 pounds or whatnot, um, 900 pounds it would take 900 pounds to tip this whole apparatus over that excludes the fact that i've got 800 pounds down here uh, also stabilizing the lift or keeping it from tipping over i don't want to include that so that means um 50 well is 50 percent being able to carry 50 percent of the load sideways is that safe um, in our area, we can get earthquake loads that are between 10 to 30 percent of the, uh, the weight acting sideways on houses and stuff like that. Um, this is pretty flexible, so it probably wouldn't be that much. I also read a study uh, that was done in um, eastern Washington at Washington State University where they took students and put them on a deck, uh, a wood frame deck, and got them swaying together using their, the weight of the people to rack the deck. And they determined that the worst case was about 30% of the weight. So if I'm in here, I don't plan on getting in the boat way up here, but if I did and I was rocking around and rocking the boat sideways, I don't expect to see exceed 30% uh, of the total weight of the boat getting it, you know, rocking side to side. So that means I've got a factor of safety here of about 0.5 divided by 0.3. So, you know, a little less than two. So it's greater than one. <laughs> so that is good.
It's uh, actually what, 1.67? 1, 1. Something like that? I don't know. Do the math. So, we're greater than 1. Uh, I prefer to be about 2. Uh, you know, for anything that's going to be a uh, long-lasting duration. But this is just temporary while I work on it. So I'm feeling pretty safe about that. And if the brake here gives way or a cable snaps on the lift, which I don't anticipate, uh, these chains, safety chains in each corner, will save me from getting squished. So, um, yeah, that that moves safety from about number 10 on this project up to about maybe number three <laughs> or four or five, somewhere in there. It's definitely not number one, I don't think. I uh, wiped down the keel, like I said, and uh, sanded it and then blew it off. And then we also got up in the uh, keel block slot. I'll, uh, let me get in there. Okay. Whoop. All right. Do, do, do. Get some light here. All right. Oop. Get my finger out of the way. So, got a good sanding up in there. I think I'm pretty pleased with that. Sorry, it's. I can't do five things at once. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so now we need to look for um, areas that need to be repaired. And um, everything looks really good. Um, these bolts, um, the, the uh, gentleman who previously did that, he kind of covered them all with sealant, which is good, but the keel has rubbed on them a little bit and well this side looks pretty good but up here let's see yeah, there's a bare bolt head up here on one of the fasteners and then right here you can see it's bare on those bolt heads so I have two options I can Put some 5200 or some other sealant just on top of the bolt heads. Or um, I could uh, put a little epoxy on there. And also up here, this tube for the plastic plug that pushes against, that could use a little epoxy or sealant. Um, back here, I did find one thing. Sit down here. Ow. Okay. Let's see. No, I can't sit down. I got a kneel. Okay. So, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, but there's a brass tube that goes up through here. This is where the cable passes. And there is a groove worn into it from. It wasn't doing it this time. I checked, but uh, previously. The cable, uh, maybe a pulley, was in the wrong position or whatever, but it it wore a groove in the side of that brass tube that's pretty deep. So I'm going to monitor that, and to help me monitor it, I'm going to fill it with thickened epoxy. Just fill that divot, and then next year I'll lower the keel and look up in there. And if that epoxy is worn in, then I know the cable is uh, still rubbing in that area for whatever reason so but yeah I'll just fill that with epoxy this is where the keel bumps up again when you crank it all the way up and that looks pretty good and it also bumps right there so um, yeah uh, the previous person had put a gob of sealant here I guess to act like a little cushion um, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe I'll do the same thing or, or just uh, paint it and let it go. It's all solid fiberglass there, so no wood or anything. So at least as far as I can tell, it's all glass. So yeah, there she is all scuffed and ready for bottom paint. So then over here, 
on the keel where the pivot pin is. Um, yeah, the previous gentleman had put some sort of uh, fairing compound or putty around here, but it, it cracked and and was chipping chipping out. It was not fully bond. So I think what I'll do is somehow tape that tube off so I don't get any epoxy in there and just put uh, thickened epoxy all the way around that. Look at that. Icicles. Anyway, I did a repoxy repair up there. This is where it bumps up. When you crank it all the way up, it bumps against there and wears. So I'll put a little epoxy there. Got some epoxy around this side and the other side. So replacing that stuff that failed. I've got uh, epoxy around the edge of the fiberglass there to kind of seal it for where the this is where the plastic uh, plug goes through to push against the keel and I touched up the heads of the uh, the bolts there on both sides just to uh, give them a little corrosion protection and that is basically it for repairs so it only took about 15 minutes so I um got notice that they were going to bring the lake back up yesterday and uh, I looked at historical records and typically they raise this lake pretty fast like six inches a day until it's full full is well it's right about there and it would totally submerge my whole work platform so I got busy and got on it unfortunately my bottom paint is not coming until Monday that I ordered and so I had to quickly run around and try to find some proper bottom paint so that I can get the um, <clears throat> keel box painted up inside there and the top of the keel that goes up inside the box painted and get this keel on in case this water level gets up to my platform which I expect in the next couple of days so <clears throat> I checked West Marine, they didn't have what I wanted. And uh, Fisheries Supply, shout out to them, north of downtown Seattle, had what I needed. And that was a three hour round trip to go get a quart of bottom paint that cost me about $140. So yeah, inflation, tell me about it. So anyway, <clears throat> I've got a good thick coat on there. And this is a trailered boat. It sits up on the lift when I'm not in the water on the lake. And uh, maybe I go out to the sound for a week or two. And then it comes back on the trailer after a good rinse. And uh, put back in the lake. So I don't really need multiple coats of bottom paint. Uh, one or two is fine. Uh, for what I'm doing. In fact, you could argue I don't need any at all. But um, anyway, the process, so you know, in case you don't know, is I wiped down the bottom paint that was there. That's the red stuff. And now this bottom paint, if you don't know about bottom paint, this is ablative. It means it wears down over time so that any algae or growth on the boat will fall off with uh, little particles of, of the paint that are coming off slowly over time. You can kind of think of it, I've heard of it like a bar of soap getting worn down over time and the, the soap gets smaller and any junk on the soap washes away. <clears throat> and so the idea is the same with the, uh, the bottom paint. Now my keel is cast iron and the boat of course is fiberglass. Typical bottom paint that are uh, used on boats out in the ocean is a cuprous oxide. It has a high content of copper in it, like 40% copper. And the copper keeps the, the growth away. <clears throat> but I don't want to use copper because my keel is metal. If I use a copper-based bottom paint, my keel might corrode. And uh, unless I've got lots of coats of epoxy on there beforehand, and I don't know exactly what's on there. And uh, I did sand it down in a few spots to the uh, 
base layer and possibly some metal in some spots. So <clears throat> I wanted a non-copper based uh, paint. Let me show you what I'm using. <clears throat> Come back up here where I have everything. So the process that I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, let me clear my throat here, is I wipe down the existing bottom paint with just regular paint thinner. Then I sand it with uh, 80 grit sandpaper. And after I've sanded it, I wipe it down with uh, the special thinner that comes with the bottom paint. For the black that you see down there, I'm using an Interlux brand, so I use their thinner. The paint I ordered is red, and it is made by Total Boat, <clears throat> and it's called Krypton. And it uses its own type of thinner. But basically, this thinner here is... If you don't have it, it's basically xylene. It just evaporates quicker. Now the bottom paint I'm using is this Interlux Pacifica Plus. And it doesn't have copper in it. What it does have in it is 3.9% of this formulation, which is the, uh, the name for it in the industry is called Echinia. Let me see if it's on here. Uh, the word is right there, Echonia, and then there's Biolux, and the Biolux is just Interlux's brand name for this concoction right here, Zinc Pyrethion. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> this Biolux, this bottom ingredient here, that keeps the soft growth off the boat, slime and and uh, stuff like that slime algae the uh, echinia keeps the hard growth off barnacles and mussels and uh, stuff like that now the stuff i ordered from total boat has six percent of the first and four percent of the second this has about four percent equal now that's far less than the 40 percent cuprous oxide bottom paints we're used to seeing the percentage wise but it turns out studies show that 6% of this echinia, this first ingredient, is like 50% um, cuprous oxide based bottom paint, which is a high quality cuprous uh, copper content. So um, I would prefer this first number to be 6%, which is what I ordered, but this is what I was able to find on short order so that I could get this together before the water comes up. So. Anyway, enough blah blah blahing. Let me um, get that final coat on that keel. All right, she is done. Let's go down and take a look at it. That should last a year or two or three or four or five. <laughs> Just keep an eye on it. As that uh, black paint wears away and I see the uh, red underneath show up, then I know I've just about worn it out. And uh, But every couple of years I need to drop this keel anyway and inspect the, the hardware, the fittings, the pins and all that sort of stuff. And of course the cable I inspect every year. But, uh, Anyhow, that's it for uh, the keel, and we can move on to other things. I don't know what that'll be yet, but it'll be something. All right, until next time, God bless you guys. Thanks, friends.